So what do you think? Uh, there is no ashtray. Are you a prima donna? The core of this character is always forward-looking. Asked many times, what's your favorite car of all the cars you built? He always had the same answer, the next one. It was the next piece of technology, the next innovation, the next race. When we win, I can't see my cars for shots of Starlet's asses. When we lose, you're a lynch mob. No, no, no. Everybody has an opinion about their version of Enzo Ferrari. It's enough to make the Pope weep. He was different with everybody. He was different with the women in his life. He was different with customers. Your Highness. Which Highness? Than he was with racers. That Highness. You, get out to the track. Enzo's relentlessness and ambition and myopic focus, I completely understand. There is a similarity between Adam Driver and Enzo Ferrari in Adam's origins. He met Agnelli at Fiat about a job. I was 19, I needed a job. The secretary came back with a card, one word written on it. He didn't get it? No. That was a long time ago. Adam applies to Juilliard, rejected, joins the Marine Corps at 19. That moment of defeat and humiliation was a big catalyst for the rest of his life moving forward. After the Marine Corps, he goes back to Juilliard and studies, and he's determined. Asking himself, who do I want to be in this world? And he discovers his passion for acting, and nothing will stand in his way. He wasn't from an elite family that had a lot of opportunity. He had to make it. And same with me. I have nobody that's in the entertainment industry, but it's something that I loved and felt confident, where it's like, well, no one can stop me from doing it. We all know it's a deadly passion. And I thought that he's Enzo Ferrari in here. A terrible joy. And there was such an integrity to the pure artistic ambition. I mean, very healthy, ego-driven artistic ambition that will drive an actor as it drives Adam to, I have to get there. I have to be in this moment. I have to be in this state of mind. I have to feel within these certain emotions. Surrounded by all kinds of sensory input. You blame me for his death? And then a stimuli comes in, a line from Lara. Yes, I blame you, I blame you, because you let him die. The father deluded himself! And then the reaction is spontaneous, and it's Enzo's reaction, it's not Adam's reaction. Ferrari was the man who had been a race car driver to begin with. His sole purpose in life is racing. It's a race car company that on the side builds passenger cars. Jaguar races only to sell cars. I sell cars only to be racing. We are completely different organisms. You have that unity that occurs when you're doing everything right and you're just in a state of flow. Barra pulls up next to you. Challenging. You're even. But two objects cannot occupy the same point in space at the same moment in time. You lift. He passes. He won. You lose. So I wanted Adam to have that experience. We raced Ferraris when we were in Modena. When you're going that fast and you're trying to find the apex of the curve and every second lost is a second off your time, the focus that's required in racing was helpful in playing who he was now, running a business, understanding the mentality of a racer. That you can't be off focus for a second or that means death. <laughs> And then building a wall because he experienced so much death. And that's your fifth opponent. Total quiet. No one talks. I think it's always good to surprise yourself as you're shooting, just to make sure that you're on point. Even if it's totally way off. Cut. Correct. Right. No deal. I have the luxury of not being the one responsible for what is inevitably used. That's Michael's decision. And I don't want to leave the set with regret that we didn't exhaust every opportunity. If Jesus had lived today, and not 2,000 years ago, he would have been not a carpenter, but a craftsman in metal like yourselves. The nature of metal, how it can be forged, shaped, 
and hammered by your skills into an engine, holding inside a fire to make power to speed us through the world. We had to replicate the sports race cars, the 315s and the, and the 335s that we used in the film. You couldn't possibly use the authentic ones. We needed cars to be safe, reliable, and very, very fast. Yes. Michael Mann asked us to reproduce cars from the Mille Miglia of 1957. We are using the old techniques that makes the car wonderful. But we are at the same time using new technology that can give us more information. We replicated those cars by doing 3D LiDAR scans of real cars. And uh, then we put that the, the shape together with a tubular chassis, which we designed. We create two kinds of cars. One is uh, fiberglass cars. The other is metal, because they are going to be crashed, and so they need to be realistic when they crash. We are having a few of the cars actually made from aluminum body panels where the guys are hammering out the aluminum in the shapes necessary, hammer welding them together, and it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, to the point where it's like, we shouldn't even paint these cars, that you can see the craftsmanship. It's handcrafted. And anything that's handcrafted, I think, has a, a soul on it. You feel that energy because of all the, the time and thought and emotion that is put into it. This is much better. Why? Oh, and we look at other objects that are designed, you know, 70 years ago. They don't stand the test of time. These are museum objects. They're absolutely stunning and they're gorgeous. And they're not self-conscious art objects. No one is sitting there in Ferrari saying, oh, let's make an art object that moves. But it's just the opposite. And so Ferrari is saying, I build engines. To, what's the car you get for free? And they're not designed to look good. They just do look good. It looks better. In all life, when a thing works better, usually it is more beautiful to the eye. You're going broke. So what do I do? Win the Mille Milla, Enzo. Or you are out of business. A thousand miles across bad roads with sheep and dogs, anything can happen. We have to win the Mille Milla, then orders for sports cars will follow. Everyone's eye will be on it. Only one team will win. Make sure it's you. The most famous race in Italy was the Mille Milla. I'm entering five cars, Collins, Rufi, De Portago, Van Trips, Jean de Bion. To me, it was a thousand mile race across open roads, through mountains, through towns, through Ravenna, the outskirts of Rome, back through Bologna, all the way to Brescia in the north where it began. I've always loved this era in motorsports. It's the most romantic, probably the most tragic and dangerous period. Pre-war up until the 50s and the jet age. Now we're accustomed to seeing big crashes and drivers walking away. In that era, they didn't. And if they made a mistake, it was usually deadly. This is an era in which the cars particularly the Ferraris, made a tremendous amount of power. Everything in the Ferraris was cutting edge, but the racing of the period was lethally dangerous. The mortality rate of the spring team from 56 to 58 is about 50%. So what possesses these men in the prime of their life to do something like this? Make no mistake, all of us are racers, or I have been. We all are certain it will never happen to me. The answer is belief that it's never going to happen to me. And my friend is killed. 
I give up racing forever on Monday. I'm back racing by Sunday. But the addiction puts you right back in that seat. We all know it's our deadly passion. Our terrible joy. It's a meditation, I think, in many ways, because the speed is intense and focus required. You don't really think about anything else. So there's a cleansing process of the mind where you don't listen to all the voices in your head. There's potential dangers at every single turn. OK, go for it. There's an unknown that could happen at any moment. But how in the midst of someone who's doing something incredibly dangerous do you stay myopically focused on what you're trying to accomplish? One race, a thousand miles across open roads will determine some, not all, of the issues that are colliding in these three months of 1957. Hope you enjoyed your behind the scenes look. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you here next time. Later.